That Big Ten Eastern Division has four teams, 4-0. Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State. Ohio State has the hickey to Oregon. Penn State's kind of, all of a sudden, they got a couple of losses themselves. But it, it's still, I mean, we're, you're looking at some great games coming up and nothing better perhaps right now this weekend. Maybe Michigan and Michigan State, both teams 7-0 for the first time ever this late in the year, both unbeaten. Joined by Graham Couch, he covers Michigan State for the uh, Lansing newspaper on Sikkim 365 Radio. Graham, what's, uh, what's the, the buildup like? How much is at stake here other than the obvious of the division? Well, that's a good question because, you know, I don't – Ohio State looks like they may be at another another level. So this may be like one of those nineteen uh, late nineteen eighties, early nineties AFC championship games where the winner is just going to get pummeled anyway eventually. But um, I, you know, for both the, these have been sort of revival seasons uh, for their programs, and they're in different stages. Jim Harbaugh year seven, Mel Tucker year two, and I think that is where uh, therein lies the difference. Right? This is there is a lot more pressure on Michigan. Uh, sort of from a macro perspective uh, to win this game because Harbaugh's 3-3 three and three against Michigan State, 0-5 oh against Ohio State. Neither of those are acceptable to that fan base. They've already cut his salary. So, his, you know, if he doesn't do well against those two teams this year, and that doesn't mean beating both, but probably beating Michigan State and being in the same stratosphere as Ohio State, I don't think he's back. Whereas for Michigan State, it's much more uh, of an opportunity. Um, like, if, if they beat Michigan. Mel Tucker's two and zero. No Michigan State's coach has ever done that against Michigan in their first two tries. It's ten wins in fourteen years over Michigan, which is pretty incredible. So it sort of is. It's sort of a firm grip on the the rivalry. So I think from a uh, big picture perspective, there's more pressure on Michigan. But whoever loses this game, there is a uh, sort of a massive thud in this season. And you know, I I, I think. The thing that's different is they've never been this. They've never been undefeated together this late, um, and you know you can say they've never been ranked this high. But pollsters don't really know squad. I mean, there there have been years where they probably should have been higher ranked than this, and they weren't. So I mean, that's not really a thing to me. But I do think there is a, uh, a hopefulness, and uh, combined with an uneasiness that you don't usually see from both sides, where nobody knows that their team is better than the other. Uh, both are optimistic that this can be something, but there's no, you know, there's no certainty. There's no feeling like this is a, this this is surely going to happen. Graham, how much? Okay, if they do win, how much will they have to pay Mel Tucker to stay if if the LSU job uh, gets even more hot around him? Yeah, that's a great question. What he's looking for and, and, and whether he'd leave. I mean, there's a lot of parallels to you know. Uh, 22 years ago, in 99, the last time these two teams were undefeated facing each other. That was Nick Saban's last year at Michigan State. Um, the next year, or the next week, Michigan State faced Purdue, just like this year. And uh, later that year, the, their coach left for LSU. So, um, I, you know, I, I do think there, you know, my understanding talking to people around uh, the administration is not as so much his salary. I mean, obviously $9 million is a lot of money. And I know Michigan State is not going to be able to match if Ohio or if LSU pays what, you know, he made, what Ed Orgeron made. Um, but what they can do is try to show that sort of all the support that needs to be around him in terms of uh, to give him a shot to win a national title someplace can exist. And that's, you know, the private planes on recruiting, the, the SUVs to pick up recruits. That's the, uh, the facility upgrades, some of which are in the works. I mean, that, those sort of things are, are important to, to, to Tucker, from what I understand. Now, he may ultimately decide he wants to, wants to jump and go and, and I have no idea if, if he'll do that. Um, but they're, they're not going to be able to match what LSU pays. So if it's simply about, you know, a, a payday and, and making more money and, and, and he sees that as a more advantageous program, like the, the one thing about LSU that, that's interesting is, you know, Mel Tucker is very close with Nick Saban. And Nick Saban made that move, but he also tried to come back. He didn't want to make that move. I mean, Michigan State would not have held on to Saban beyond forever because he would have had that NFL itch and, you know, eventually wound up with the Dolphins and somebody like Alabama had called. But, you know, he only left for LSU because of a spat with the school president. And then he tried to come back and they wouldn't let him come back. So it's, I don't know that it's as, it's as obvious a thing. And, and I think, you know, LSU is also a program that won a national title two years ago and is now firing their coach. So in terms of what you're walking into and what sort of place you want to be, he got the new AD he wants at Michigan State. Um, 
So I, it's really about what 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 are his priorities. You're making five and a half million a year, third most in the Big Ten. Michigan State might be able to do a little more, but you basically know what you're going to make at Michigan State. You know what you're going to be, what you're going to have, and it's I think at a certain level what you want for yourself. Graham, uh, it's been a little while since they played. Uh, last uh, suiting up a couple Saturdays ago against Indiana, and and that was a tough game. That was, that was one that they were able to, to get by and remain undefeated. But what did that game kind of tell you about where they are and what has that led to as far as the focus goes uh, over the last week uh, plus in, in terms of preparing for Michigan? Well, I, I think that's the second time we've seen a defense outplay uh, Michigan State for at least parts of the game and, and and how much they struggle with that when that happens. I mean, when you take away, if you can take away their running game, which is the dynamic at times, um, with just your, your front seven, without putting a whole lot of extra attention on it, um, you, you can give Michigan State some problems. Because they've got a, a really smart young quarterback who's very accurate. And they've got a couple explosive receivers. They obviously have a great running back. And their offensive line has improved. But it's not a offensive line that's just going to maul anybody. So I think that's really the question is, is – um, you know, you can make Michigan State struggle. You know, Indiana flatly out their defense flatly outplayed Michigan State, and if Indiana had a better offense, would have won that game. So, I, you know, that that's what you take away is if you can control the line of scrimmage, you can limit Michigan State. And um, and uh, so, if, if that's if you're Michigan, the blueprint is there. Um, the the question for Michigan is the teams that have uh, given Michigan State some trouble are teams that can can also throw the ball a little bit. Michigan hasn't had to win that way. So to me, it's going to come down to a lot of who can do what they want to do. And Michigan has been uh, beating up on, you know, they've been running the ball extremely well. Michigan State against the middle of the pack and down on defenses has really dominated the Big Ten. But this is largely the first quality competition either has faced this year. Not really their own fault. Washington and uh, Miami wound up being, you know, Washington was down this year. Their defense was carrying the day and eventually broke. Uh, you know, Miami is always a disappointment, and that's who Michigan State played, and they've sort of fallen off a cliff. Nebraska beats itself every week. They Both teams played them. Um, so there, there are a lot. They haven't. Neither team has played a, an opponent where you go, wow, look what they did against them. And that's why there's a lot of uncertainty, because people just don't know. And, and, and ultimately, I think both these teams are probably somewhere around top 15 level teams, fairly equal, even though they're different. And, um, you know, but whoever wins the game gets to move on living a blissful existence for at least a week longer. You know, Graham, the fact you just said that about Nebraska breaks my heart. He's a Nebraska so fan, true. Graham. You are so true. God bless you, sir, for being <laughs> true, be, being true, sir. That Never Michigan has State everything one, been more true than what you just said. That Michigan State <laughs> one was a tough one. Oh, too. that was the one. Yeah, <laughs> the punt. A, dude, yeah. You know, like, like, let's kick it to the wrong guy. Uh, <laughs> so, you, uh, you know, this is, this is fun, though. And you're right. Ohio State looks like they're kind of getting their mojo back together just in time for a late-season run as well. Um you know, I like what Mel Tucker did at Colorado. I like what he's doing now. And, and uh, yeah, the fact that this is kind of like, let's just go out and play rather than the, the pressure on Michigan State. How good are they, in your opinion? How good is Michigan State? They've won a few times with smoke and mirrors, but how good do you think they are? Well, they've got some guys that are, you know, legit. I mean, they've got some NFL guys. And, and you know, they're, both their receivers are, are NFL players. Um, they're running back, an NFL player. The left side of their offensive line is going to play in the league. And their quarterback is, I mean, I, I think a lot of it comes down to what, how quickly he grows into what I think he'll become. And, uh, I mean, he is a redshirt sophomore, first year as a starter, uh, you know, and is he ready yet when, when things are shut down and, and, and the running game and, and to really, you know, carry the day a little bit. And he hasn't been to this point. And, but he, I mean, you talk to him, a very, very sophisticated player. He's the son of a, uh, you know, his dad's a Division three head coach. You know, his grandfather was a Division three head coach. I mean, like, he, he comes from a – and, like, he threw an interception in the end zone last week, and you talk to him about it. And it, the analysis of what went wrong and why it went wrong and what he missed and where he should have gone with the ball is just it, – it's not like he's some doofus who you go, boy, that – you know, I mean, it's – you get it at certain points that he's – He's gonna, and so the question is, and I think Michigan State's ceiling is largely around: Can he grow into something that makes their offense just such a pain to deal with? Uh, by the time they say get to Ohio State, that they have a chance in a game like that, because they, you know, defensively in the middle of the line, I think they're really good. They're okay on the edge. Safety is, 
the strength of their defense. They've got a safety who's definitely going to play in the NFL. They got two decent corners, guys who transfer from Florida and Alabama, respectively. Got a linebacker who's prototypical, who once he figures out where he's supposed to be, will play in the NFL. He's a younger player, and I mean, so they've got some talent. And um, you know, he's remade that roster really fast with, with the transfer portal, and um, so they're good. They're just not they're not overwhelming. And, um, but they've, they sort of had that it factor. They don't beat themselves. They, and, 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 uh, neither does Michigan to, to their credit. Thank you, Graham. Appreciate it. Have fun. Lansing State Journal, Graham Couch joins us on Sikkim 365 Radio 365 Sports on Michigan and Michigan State. Coming up next, we have Florida on the clock 